Okay, we are back in Sentinels the Multiverse. So, we are going to go up against Kaladrock, or whatever its name is. He gives you three turns to set up, and the team that I have here is all about damage mitigation, so that we can try to not die horribly. Does he have a 20... Ah, oh, he does. What is this one? Huh. So yeah, we'll give it a shot. Um, she has one too, but I think it... I think all of her powers are kind of bad, to be honest. So yeah, we'll give these two a shot. Let's put Cricket... Yeah, we'll leave a Cricket there. So I'll explain stuff as we go. Since this environment is supposed to be Prohibition-themed, it's still very heavily skewed towards the villains, just like Rook City. And in case you're wondering about this guy, he's a combination of Gloomweaver and Infinitor. You. I haven't felt this presence in many years. Beware, my friends. This wind carries the scent of death. So he's going to summon his three pillars, which are relics just like Loom Weaver. As you chip away at them, they give you crap. They also give him damage mitigation. If you notice, he's not a target yet. It takes him three turns to come out, kind of like Chairman does. And we actually did start with Fall. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one first. We're going to have to hit one of our allies, but... Someone can heal, right, stranger? So we have the enhanced hearing thing here. We can actually do the return pulse and get card draws. In case you're wondering, Cricket's base power is like uh, Adamant Idealist, except not as good. <laughs> like, Adamant Idealist at least deals damage, she just does damage reduction. The pillars will never hit you, so no stress over it. Drawing two to look for a glyph. Quickening. That won't help her. That won't help her. Won't help her. <laughs> what a start. So, uh, let's put this next to the one that gives you card draws. In case you're wondering, all of his stuff plays around the three phases. You have... Well, he also has some of Citizen Dawn cards, too, now that I think about it, because he summons a season just like she does. But anyway, for the pillars, one gives you card draws, you hit it, the other one gives you card plays, and the other one gives you power plays. card. So I'm going to destroy this for the card draws. Wow. We're off to a kind of bad start for her. There we go. Now we actually need a damage card. So I can use Elusive to speed up my setup. Hmm. So normally I like playing Stoke the Furnace so that I can uh, start drawing cards and try to find a memento, but we're going to use Jailbreaker here just so we can deal some damage. In case you're wondering, the trigger is every six points of damage, so when we get down to 19, we'll get a card draw from the Pillar of Night. Ethereal Armory, I'm kind of curious if there's a cheese tray you can do here at God Cervantes Club. Well, I have to discard two cards. Luckily, I have these corruptions. So he gets his second token. I'm gonna put Fallout. I'm giving this to Lady because I'm looking for a specific card of hers. To be honest, I'm looking for specific cards on everyone. I'm gonna give this a stranger because I think he can heal better. I'm looking for her stick at the moment because that'll allow me to deal one point of damage and still, uh. We're 
gonna give this to Terminus. Still play a card. Out so we can deal a little bit of extra damage. Yeah. Important to know you can't choose Kellid Rock here until he flips, he's not a target just like the chairman. here. We'll do that one. Do this one to get a flash recon out. They will tell us what all is there, so let's speed through this. He's going to summon an angel from the get-go. Ooh, we can play a blink. So, Silent Stalker is handy for when you have multiple powers, but the problem is I don't. So, I'm gonna go for this one. We can use Flickering Strike to draw two. We got the Gauntlet. There might be a cheese strat we can do there. I could definitely see it in the Court of Blood. able to speak anymore, but I will try to explain what exactly I'm doing here. The whole strategy is I'm trying to prevent him from playing his entire deck, which is where, uh... Vanish, that's her name. <laughs> yeah, I drew such a blank there. Yeah, that's where she comes in. 
So she'll also help with some of the damage mitigation stuff, but I'm kind of using her like Tempest, so just so you know. Now unfortunately, since I'm jumping in the middle, I don't know how many tokens he's in. I'm assuming that was number three and he's going to flip next turn. But otherwise, I am going to turn this essentially into a race where I have four turns before all hell breaks loose. And I don't mean from here, I mean from when he actually does flip. So, since I have to use all four here, I want to hit her first so that she heals. Then I want to do the amplified hit for someone else, the electric on him, and then the cold somewhere else. Basically, this allows me to not actually hurt the teammates, and ultimately, we will stay at the same amount of HP. So, where to begin with her? <laughs> I'm not a fan of her quasi-Meteor Storm ongoing card. <sighs> like, the main reason why she's here is because she can help get stuff out of the trash, so it keeps us going. Thing is, for her, I always want to get her stick out because you can deal chip damage, yes, but then you also get a card play. And then she has a different card, I don't remember what it's called, that gives you a additional power play per turn, provide the first power doesn't, or provide you don't deal damage. There it is, that one that I just drew, the one where she's smacking the gold monster. So as long as you don't deal damage, you get an additional power play, and then you're free to have that power play deal damage, so it's not like completely harmless. Basically we can use this to try to mitigate some damage when he flips, like right now I'm using just because, hey, I don't have anything else to do. So right there we got the quickening. I can use that to try to set up, it's just I don't have a lot of stuff to set up. I really need my glyphs on Stranger in order to not have him blow himself up. And I ended up doing a double skip there for the two card draws and I finally got one of the cards I needed. So the abduct card is the key to this strategy where we're going to basically throw into the stratosphere and while Teppa steals damage, she does not. But there's a little bit of other cheese we can do. As for Terminus, she is the other linchpin here where... I'm trying to remember if any of the other heroes have the ability to remove something from the game other than their own cards, like, you know, Stuntman does, and... Uh, what was the other one? Yeah, I'm just drawing a blank here. So, right there, I need her card to basically make it so that there's not a lot of things to remove. But otherwise, the crystals have to go so that he doesn't have the damage reduction I can actually start to hurt him. So yes, Jailbreaker does cause you to hit yourself, but Terminus is tanky and she can heal. Unfortunately, I don't have the other healers with me here to do some like ridiculous numbers, but just know Doc Havoc and Doc Medico can they can generate some really impressive numbers, I'll put it that way. So we're playing that to guarantee a glyph draw. And unfortunately the art on those are so similar I can't really remember which is which. While doing the post-game commentary, my screen is like a quarter the size of normal, so I can't even read the text. I have to remember what the art is for some of these cards that are fairly new to me. But like I said before, Terminus is probably like the hero I am the most familiar with out of this bunch. With uh, I d it's between Stranger and Vanish for the next one. one. For the Lady, I think I played her once, and then. kind of hoping that she has a variant that's actually like better tuned for a lot of other stuff. But don't get me wrong, if you want to do some cheese, then there are ways to get her to fit. Anyway, the Chain Conductor is pretty important because he can help you get a memento out. He basically guarantees an equipment draw. So, like, on your first turn, that can be an amazing card to pull. The thing is, as you start to get your Jailbreaker and your Coils, then it's, uh, not quite as potent. And the reason for that is there can only be one Jailbreaker on the field at a time, even though it's not limited, it has the effect of destroying other cards, so it's kind of weird. And I'm not a fan of the Speakeasy 
card there, I forgot what exactly it's called and I can't see the text, but the whole gimmick is he forces you to discard. So Keladrock has entered the game. If you choose to remove tokens, he'll play an additional card, and I'm just going to have him build up his tokens and try to kill him first. So right here I got the most favorable draw of the bunch, where he will pull the demons. So there's only two of these. If he pulls the seasons, like Sizz and Dawn has, he will play all four. He only has a single avatar, so you cannot get him in a loop with that. And then there's something else he has that there's a trio of. Now, the thing about the demon cards that he just played, when you hit one, it becomes immortal and unable to be damaged in any way, shape, or form. And it's going to be like that until you hit its counterpart. Now, if the counterpart is not on the field, that does not take effect, so hopefully you can see what I'm getting at here. But anyway, the important thing about the lady is she's able to deal un irreducible damage, so I'm able to bypass the damage reduction he gets from the crystals. So it's kind of like a cheese strategy of sorts, but uh, not quite as potent. Basically, I try to recreate the whole team damage reduction thing here with Terminus being... Well, Terminus can do the damage reduction with the coil, she just has to pay tokens for it. Stranger can do some hardcore damage reduction with his seals. I forgot what rune it is exactly. And to be completely honest, I'm so not familiar with Cricket, I don't even know what that card does. Okay, it's the Sonic Vortex equivalent. So for every card I discard, I get to smack someone. And right here I'm trying to figure out, can I get Stranger to set up? Is there something I can do that will give him a bit of an edge? And yeah, Stranger I've had the most difficulty trying to uh, get any degree of success with. His nemesis I think is Dendron, so there will only be two nemesis games for that one. I'll show his base and then uh, we'll go to one of his other variants. But, yeah, I'm not going to go out of my way with him too much because I don't think he's really worth the effort. He's just too difficult to set up and I'm not sure if there's like that many comeback mechanics. Anyway, by dealing the thunder damage I can bypass all the damage reduction and once again the fall effect will kick in to where I'm going to start blocking some damage. So hitting the angels is somewhat meaningless. I need to actually deal a certain amount to one of them and then anything beyond that is just like icing on the cake so to speak. Ultimately my goal is to get them down to 6 HP just in case you're wondering. And now the good news is, with the crystal on the field, I can actually have it at target so I don't have to have her hit herself. And as a result, I can net some HP. And as for this, I'm just looking to see which one's invulnerable, because the magic number is, of course, 6. Once again, you want to make sure that you deal the thunder damage to the rock himself there. That way, you get a little bit more prote uh, protection from when he starts to lash out. Now, in case you're wondering what I'm so worried about, he deals damage based on the tokens that are on him, so he will continuously build up to the point where he's utterly overwhelming, and even with all the damage reduction you see me putting on, by the end of this match he will actually surpass that and still deal some decent damage. And my whole strategy here is literally, I'm not going to let him play cards. I'd rather take the damage and race him and hopefully not die. But anyway, that card that I played does give me a additional play, so to speak, as long as it's a rune or a glyph. And that card right there is the binding card, so that's going to reduce the amount of damage he's able to do. So right here I'm getting him for a little bit of chip damage, because every little bit counts. I mean, that was 1% of his HP, a full 1%. And right here I'm trying to figure out, is it time? So I do want to get this out so that when I use her power she can actually deal a little bit of damage. And we are going to... That's right. We are going to send the Devil back to the top of the deck. Now I chose the Devil here just because he has the more HP than the Angel does. So we know what he's going to play next turn, then he's going to fish out all the other demons in his deck, which is just that one Angel. 
But if the Angel's on the field, I mean, can he really do anything? So right here is your answer for when you have villains that will play a crap load of cards. So right there we are removing it from play. So it no longer exists, he can no longer pull out multiple demons, and as a result his damage is somewhat contained. And we just pulled a memento. Um, that's the counterattack one, in case you're wondering. So as I was saying, he cannot get his additional plays now because the demon has been removed. And the reason why you want to do that is they will deal 4 AoE damage every turn if allowed unchecked. So just by uh, removing one from play, we cut that in half, and as a result, like it's going to double our survivability. That's all it comes down to. But anyway, the uh, all aboard will activate all the transport effects, so I think this is like everyone plays a card or something. I don't remember. But of course my strategy here is going to be, nope, you don't get to play crap. I don't know how he interacts with Legacy with, like, uh, takedown, stuff like that. Um, I'm trying to think of the Night Mist card. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank. Um, those may be ways for you to remove tokens while not allowing him to play and give you a little reprieve. And then just keep in mind, there are other environments you can play at that are just going to be a little bit more tolerable. Like, if you want to make some really, really, really short work out of most of his stuff, you're going to want to bring Expatriate, Dark Watch specifically, you're going to want Hair Trigger Reflexes, she's going to aim every turn, and you're going to want stuff that's going to boost her damage. So, like, Legacy with Galvanize, Heroic Intercept, or not Heroic, it's an Inspiring Presence. Those things will allow you to pop the seasons as they hit the field, and you just need a little bit more damage here or there to just push you over the edge. And you'll be able to pop most of the stuff he plays. The demons are going to have enough HP to survive, but more importantly, you can stop the seasons from hitting the field. And, like, worst case scenario, his avatar comes out. That one's annoying because it's innate damage reduction. So, like, the good news is there's only one avatar in the deck. The bad news is it has 20 HP, it's AoE, it does a ton of damage. It's, like, hero damage across the board, so in this case, 5. It can get ridiculous. And now keep in mind, I am making things a little bit more difficult for myself here simply because I want to show off Cauldron stuff. I could go into the base game and get some guys who would be extremely helpful here. And then keep in mind, you always have the option of, you know, Legacy with Heroic Interception and Next Evolution and... Yeah, he's, uh... Or no, it's not Next Heroic Interception. I'm thinking of uh, Lead from the Front. And just make yourself immune, nullify everything, and he his hands are effectively tied. I believe he only does projectile damage, so you really can't cripple him if you know what you're doing. But anyway, he played the demon, so we need to uh, do some stuff. So right here I'm fishing for some damage because I know I can only stop him for so many turns. So we need to get the damage wherever we can, and every little bit helps. So we're going to continue to use this power for the out-of-turn play, which will still allow me to deal damage. And we just gotta keep abducting and sending him to the top of the deck and rinse and repeat while the other guys try to supply the DPS and some damage mitigation. So I did get rid of the memento there because I'm trying to not get hit, so therefore I should not need a counterattack. But I would love to get out the Graven Shell, I think it is, or Graven Bullet, which will boost her damage dealt. The other one, the badge, is still decent because it's going to give her token generation. It's very consistent means for that. Oh, right, right, right. I remember that now. Um, so, uh, oh, crud, he hit the field. So we have to discard, I think, two cards, or is it just one? Oh, he makes you discard, and then everyone has to discard. So this isn't really as bad because I have the cards to spare at the moment. But yeah, the badge will give Terminus a nice source of token generation. It's kind of like, um... Crud, what's the card in setbacks deck? Like, I've been trying to learn some of the new stuff, and I'm starting to forget the old crap. <laughs> but 
But otherwise, yes, there are combos you can do between the old and the cauldron guys, so... I doubt I'm gonna get that far into the game, but... I can definitely do some games to show you what all is in here, and hopefully breathe some life into the game. I don't really know how the cauldron stuff is going to change with the reboot, because a lot of the stuff probably will need to be updated. And while a lot of the cauldron stuff is pretty imaginative, I hate to say it, but... Quite a few of the heroes are significantly weaker than their normal game counterparts. One of the ones who comes to mind is Stranger. Like, at that difficulty, you're better off just playing Arjun Adept. Like, he does far, far more. I know he's one of the really broken guys, but I'm referring to how many cards you have to get into play to really do stuff. And it really reminds me of the whole uh, instrument and then the various song aspects. In all honesty, with as difficult as things are for a Stranger, I kinda wish he did a little bit more. The most important thing I have to say, though, for him is, uh... If you're gonna get your board wiped for some reason by Citizen Dawn's Devastating Aurora, or something like that where you have to shed an immense amount of ongoing cards, Omnidrum comes to mind, Order truly does matter for him, because you want to make sure you save your glyphs for last, because the glyph of immolation, and specifically that one, that will allow you to lash out and deal damage for every single rune you have to sacrifice. Otherwise, I'm trying to think of other ways you might be able to bypass his self-damage, but since it's irreducible, it's very tricky. You have to, like, somehow become immune to toxic type or use, like, uh, Twist the Ether with Flesh of the Sun God. Well, you don't have to use Twist of the Ether. You could have, uh, Imbued Fire with Flesh of the Sun God, and that will block it. That would allow you just to play as many runes as you want with no consequence. The one thing is, you'd probably have to set this on memory mode to remember, yeah, I, I don't want to actually make all this call every single turn. Just, no, leave them all out. So I forgot what it was in particular I was looking for here. So I think I want to play the Mark of Breaking right there that I'm hovering over. That is basically his ongoing and environment destruction, so to speak. You basically give that card hit points just like... I uh, can't remember what that card is in the Realm of Discord. Imbued Fragility, I think it is, that gives everything HP. It's like that, but for a villain thing. And it's only one, luckily. Anyway, I put the mark quickly on her so that she can try to set up. That's the card that gives two plays per turn. And I think right here I'm looking for his next glyph, and I essentially got it right there. So we need to do the out of turn card play. That way we can abduct the demon and put him back on the deck. And now I believe she only has three copies of this card, and we've played all three pretty much sequentially. Of this particular group, the only one who can give you cards back, kind of... Well, it's not even like Tempest, because you're using Ongoing to do it, but... The only way to get cards out of the trash here is with Cricket. And in case you're wondering, yeah, that that's pretty much why I brought her. She's in a fairly awkward spot for trying to be the most practical. Like, if not for this particular strategy I was doing here, she is normally one of the heroes that would be much, much better off as the anchor of the team rather than the front. So right here, I think I was considering, am I gaining tokens, a card play, or what exactly happens? And I need as many tokens as I can get. <laughs> Yeah, that environment card's gotta go. <laughs> but the good news is we're starting to whittle away his HP. I mean, we've used up our three cards, and he's almost down to half. I mean, two-thirds, right? And something. So I th think right here I just throw Caution to the Wind and say, give me the three. <laughs> that pretty much guarantees that I'm gonna have to do a discard of sorts. 
in case you're wondering about the speakeasy card, I still can't remember its name. You do not ever want to use that on the Southwest Sentinels. Since their deck is like 96% one-shots, you are almost guaranteed to have to make the discards. Now if you have a, like an excess of cards, you could probably do it, it's just... You're probably better off just having Doc do all the healing and not rely on the environment. But otherwise, part of the whole strategy with the Stranger here is by having the Lady of the Wood counterattack when she's hit, and since it's going to be Toxic type, that will allow her to heal. It's going to keep her as like the healthiest hero of the bunch, and not exactly by a small margin either, really. So I don't remember which one of those ongoing switch, but one of them is basically you uh, become a little bit more durable and get healing. Like, the exact way is if you don't deal damage, you heal, and the other one is you can hit yourself to deal more damage. The latter really plays into the summer card. You can kind of burn yourself, but hit really hard, or... So, yeah, I can use the, see, the rune to heal off of that. Sadly, I don't have summer in effect, but we can use that for the damage. And then Vanish has to take one for the team so we get the card draw. I think I'm still looking for that one card, the fall ongoing one, so that you can deal consistent electric damage. So right here we get to pull a card from our trash to our hand. I don't remember what it was I took on her. Sadly there's like no good choice for the stranger, he only has four glyphs in his deck, so once you have those out you're basically just cycling runes for the rest of the game until either you die or something else dies. It may sound like I'm being really harsh to the stranger, but the truth is, I really did want more out of him. He, I like... If you've seen my League stuff, you know how much I go for the nature elemental stuff. This is not an exception, so... Yeah. Like, if I still played it, I've probably bought all the Elderwood skins by now. So yeah, we have to take the damage one last time. The good news is our HP is now low enough to where the villains are starting to be within range. Okay, I remember that card. If you destroy a villain ongoing, you get to hit something once, and then if you destroy an environment card, you deal like one point of sonic damage across the board. So right there is the Glyph of Immolation, so we get to deal one point of fire damage. That's right, folks, one. Now keep in mind, you can build Stranger to deal some damage. You have to give him the runes that boost his damage. You want to put the runes on the enemy that will amplify the damage. And as you pop runes, yes, they can start to really matter. It's just... Actually, I think this is the variant of the Stranger that can do that. Like, his most DPS-centric form. But yeah, I just know that some of the other ones are not so potent. Which you'll see when we get to Dendron. I think she's actually after this video, or like the one after that one too. It's just since there's two variant or two forms of her, we will have two games. So this is it folks, number four. So, fourth time, we're finally sending it back to the top of his deck to bind him for one more turn, and we almost have him at half health, so... I mean, what's the worst that could happen? I mean, it only took us four turns to get here. I mean, we can take him down the next turn, right? Right? Anyone? But yeah, we need to start bringing the pain. So 
so we already knew what his top card was. I could have used that first and tried to see what would come next, but in all honesty, it really doesn't matter. That one is already in play, I think, so if I were to do this, it either go, I think it goes into her hand. Some cards do get discarded. Uh, in case you're wondering, an example that would be any of the mementos once you have the one in play. You're only allowed one memento in a game, it's indestructible once it hits the field, it cannot be destroyed by even devastating Aurora. But the catch is, should you try to play another one, it's just draw four cards and then trash or remove... I, you might remove it from the game, I don't remember, but it, it's not allowed to hit the field, it's just worth four card draws. But otherwise, yes, we are still fishing for something from her, which is why I want this chain conductor. So it's another coil. At least I think it's another one. I thought I had one already. We can go ahead and hit him and pay the three tokens, and then it's one point of damage reduction. The one thing I have to worry about here is there isn't a card in the environment deck that will cause uh, out-of-turn card plays for the villain, and his ability will still activate, so you can have him play everything out of turn, and just know that I'm doing a very, very, very high-risk scenario here that is not worth this in normal play. Do not fight him here, seriously. You want to fight him in an environment that's going to actually limit card plays, even if it's for you, too. And what does the Zeppelin do? I don't remember. So out comes the Devil for the fifth time? By doing that, I'm allowed to play a rune out of turn. And right here is when I said, okay, I've had enough to speak easy. It's gotta go. But yeah, he has finally reached the point where he's gone well beyond the point of damage reduction. So, I can remove tokens to weaken him, it's just... I can't afford the season to in the field. If you're wondering, Spring is like the Immolation Beam, I believe, from Omnitron. I'm, like, I remember what that does, I just don't remember which element is which for him, so whenever you play a card, you get zapped for two electric, which is insane. Omnitron only hits you for one energy. Summer is exactly like Citizen Summer from... Is it Summer? Or, I think it's Citizen Summer, either that or it's Citizen hammer, where it's two fire damage across the board. Citizen Winter gives damage reduction, kind of like Citizen Anvil. I'm trying to remember if she hits you or not. And Citizen Fall, I think, pops your ongoing stuff, just like Citizen Autumn would, or the Autumn Season here, or Fall Season, would do the same as Citizen Autumn. So right here I did those in the wrong order. So you can still deal the toxic damage thanks to Stranger. Fire into him. Thunder into him. And cold into the mark. And there's the bullet I've been looking for for so freaking long, man. Unfortunately, it's coming in way too late to really be impactful, but it's still much, much appreciated. It's just I really need to get that into play, otherwise we are going to die a horrible, horrible death. Like, if there's a moral to be gained from this game, I would say it's, now you know why Infinitor doesn't have 100 hit points. Oh, in case you're wondering about that card I just played, that's her her being Cricket, her equivalent of the Omni Can from Bunker. Unfortunately, hers doesn't hit anywhere near as hard as his, but hers charges much more rapidly. If you are against Voss or someone else who will bring out a ton of villains that you can actually chip away at, she can charge that real fast and then nuke the villain for the trouble. So 
So yeah, we need to keep those bindings in place. <laughs> I'm kind of curious that would give me any sort of additional effect, but it doesn't. I think I do play the other marker breaking because I need to destroy the uh, Admiral's thing there. So at this point I want to just deal some damage while still getting some rune plays out. And anything I play is pretty much just going to be a sacrifice to the Glyph of Immolation at this point. I was contemplating whether I want to try to finish off the Devil thing there, but I really need to focus my damage on Kaladrak. Um, in case you're wondering if I, why I played that other elusive, it was because I, I'm afraid uh, citizen, or not citizen, just the fall season. I'm gonna keep doing that just because he, he, they ripped that off of citizen dawn. I'm sorry, but yeah, if that comes out, it's an easy ongoing to dispose of. So, yeah. oh, I need to go away for a second. So a couple things that did come to mind for what I could have done better here to uh, make it smoother. I think I would probably try to swap out Stranger for Wraith, because if you can do a double stun bolt with the targeting computer, I think that's going to outdamage the majority of what he does. I mean, I will lose the healing on the lady, but I simply can't stress it enough. I, like, he doesn't... The role he fills is done by other heroes better, and... Once again, to use Wraith as an example, I mean, you have the grappling hook to pop environment cards instead of having to put out that mark of destruction and then having to pop its five hit points. Otherwise, I think the other ones, for the most part, filled a role. I mean, I could also swap out Cricket for, uh... Legacy, of course, would be really broken. You can go for Mr. Fixer with his Grease Gun. I'm trying to think of who else has stuff that kind of ties up everything, but... Like, those are the two obvious ones. And Fixer, of course, would have the benefit of being able to use the Hoist Chains to mitigate damage. You could even do some Redirection Cheese with, uh... It's Mantis, I think? It's been a little while since I've played the traditional guy, as you may have guessed. And, of course, Legacy is just outright broken, because you can always do the next evolution, lead from the front, and... You're not gonna take damage easily. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what that radio card was because I think that one only came up once the entire time I played this environment. In case you're wondering, by the time I've done this commentary, I have played other games here. I mean, um, I think the RAM game was uploaded already on the channel, so you'll have seen that. And I normally remember the Zeppelin, to be honest. <laughs> and the Speakeasy one is another one that I freaking hate. But anyway, right here I no longer have the ability to bind his deck, so... He's able to start playing cards. And then once again, going back to Legacy, you have Takedown Fall Back on this. Night Mist has a card. I assume it will bind him up so you can remove the token safely. It's just there's so much AoE damage, I don't think like doing a mist form turtling strat would really help. For that same reason, I would not recommend Visionary, even though she can help you manipulate the deck to a degree. He has ongoing card or not ongoings, he has one shots that will uh, shuffle the trash into the deck. So you can't even fall back on that exactly. I guess Parse could be a little decent here, trying to uh, make sure that he only plays specific cards. But still... But anyway, yeah, since my luck has kind of run out here, this is like my last stand. I either have to take him out this round, or he's going to start playing crap and murder everything. So I'm going for the nuke here instead, and I'm trying to throw everything I have into it. 
Granted, that does give the lady a lot of healing, but that's not exactly what we're aiming for here. We're aiming for pain. And I have to admit, turning her thunder damage irreducible is so sweet. So we can see that would be another one-shot or ongoing, I couldn't tell what that was. It's not going to be a monster card yet. Well, a target, I should say, even though I consider all of his stuff to be rather monsters, even though some are humanoid. And right here I'm trying to figure out, like, what is optimal here? So we can play the top card of another hero's deck, and I chose Vanish, as you can see, or, yeah, Vanish is her name. So right here I realized, yep, that's not going to do anything. Let's move on to the next thing. So I go for the damage mitigation thing just because I get a free power anyway, so it really doesn't matter. But it's time to fire off our sonic gun thing. In case you're wondering, that uh, one shot he played gave him two points of damage reduction, so that's why everything kind of bounces off him. And right here we can try to heal the lady a little. Otherwise, he really doesn't have any damage that he can do, so I'm looking for cards that will amplify teammates. And as a last resort, I kind of want to try to heal him. So these really don't matter just because of how the game is wound down, but it can be a pretty important card, otherwise get specific runes back. I'll take the HP for all of them. And I believe that was the redirect card I played, and the sole reason why I played that was... Oh, right. So I did want to trigger her counterattack here. Uh, the sole reason I played that was I might be able to buy her one last turn if things go really wrong, but you can see with only two hit points left, it's not really coming to that. Now I believe that does amplify the rest of the damage he takes, so that helps further get around his damage reduction. But otherwise, yes, we've held on to that. For nothing. <laughs> um, like, there's no reason to play the Chain Conductor or anything, so... At this point, it's just deal the damage and call it a day. And like that, we have beaten Keladrock. So, there were easier ways to go about it, but this was the way using Cauldron exclusive stuff, and I'll see what else I can find with the other heroes as we go. That's it for now, folks. I'm the Hero of Light. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.